Alrighty, Teresa, could you please just introduce yourself? Uh, Tino Falaba, kia ora koutou. Uh, my name is Teresa Ngobi. Um, I'm a mum, I'm a wife, I'm an Otaki Electric local, um, and I'm also the Otaki um, M Electric MP as well um, here in Otaki. Uh, I was born and raised in the bin, um, and um, Pacifica Scottish uh, ancestry. Yeah, that's a little bit about me. Awesome. So um, this kaupapa we'll be having a kūrero about today is APEC and how APEC um, and APEC Voices of the Future, the kind of youth forum as part of APEC, can help chart the way to a better future. So how do you think APEC can work to help to ensure that cooperation that we really need right now? Yeah, so it is about that cooperation. As you see, we're going through COVID at this minute and we're not the only country, right? So we're here together with uh, international countries in terms of fighting COVID. Um, uh, is really important, but also within the having that you know, voices that cover all our different um, uh, uh, countries, but certainly here, Māori, Pacific, uh, Tukitāku, um, you know, our youth voice, our senior voice, um, or, you know, to make sure that it's inclusive and we can get it, um, to be able to, uh, yeah, have those voices heard in terms of that international stage, so when we are working together, we're including that and working together so that we get those uh, real benefits and real outcomes that are going to serve everybody, not just some. Mm. So if we had that international cooperation working to its fullest, what would that better future look like in your view for the for the region, for the Asian Pacific region? Yeah, inclusiveness, yeah. Um, healthier communities, uh, greener communities, so I know that it's something uh, you're really keen on, Sophie, and actually I really back that, and I think if I put my Pacifica hat on for a minute, uh, we know we're getting a lot of Pacifica whānau moving here to Aotearoa, and that is due to um, the erosion of their islands, due to uh, the climate damage that's happening for them at the moment. So, voices, and including their Pacific voice, in the international work of Kalanau APAC, and being able to understand real time what climate impact has on people all over the world, including our Pacific people, that's what I think we can start to see a change um, to make sure that we uh, are hearing those voices and see what we can do to make a change to, to stop um, further damage to the environment. And why do you think it's important that youth voices are heard loud and clear through these corridors? Yeah, I don't want to start seeing Whitney Houston, but you know, we know <laughs> that you know, our yeah. are our future. Um, yeah. I'm a mum of three, um, my boys are 11, 9, and 6, and I need to make sure that whatever. Um, we leave them in terms of Papatoa and Naku is something that they're going to be able to live on. They're going to be able to swim in the oceans. They're going to be able to um, have an equal footing when they go for jobs. They're going to be able to access tertiary education just like their other counterparts are um, and uh, be able to live um, you know, uh, their life in, to their full potential. So, um, you know, in order to do that, we need to make sure that we're not making the decisions for them, that we've got people who understand uh, youth who have a youth voice and they're helping us to make those decisions to ensure that we're bringing everybody along. Again, it goes back to that inclusiveness, right? Smashed it. Anything else you want to say? No, just uh, <laughs> thanks for the opportunity and um, uh, go all our, our four young people. I'm really, um, really proud of you all, especially Sophie Hanford. Well done, my Aww, friend. Aw, thanks, sis.